Wow, just think, the Crab Nebula used to be a star. A big star. Bigger than our sun, but much the same. Then it exploded. Now we can see the dust and gas blown out into space from the explosion. Cool! And the original star collapsed down to the size of a large city, but still weighs millions of tons. And it pulses with energy. It is a pulsar. <laughs> Let's Explore Astronomy is sponsored in part by... Distinctly Yukon, the Westmark Whitehorse Hotel and Conference Center is the Yukon's premier lodging facility. Make your reservations today at westmarkhotels.com. Westmark Hotels, with nine unique locations throughout Alaska and the Yukon. On other episodes of Let's Explore Astronomy, we showed what happens when a star goes supernova and explodes. What is left is a small star called a neutron star. Everything we know is made up of atoms. An atom is made of protons and neutrons and electrons orbiting around them. In between the center of the atom, called the nucleus, and the electrons is empty space. Now let's crush the atom. This is what happens in a supernova. All the atoms in the star are crushed. The electrons fuse into protons. Since protons are positively charged and electrons negatively charged, when they fuse together, they cancel each other out to form a neutron. So now the atoms are only made up of neutrons with no empty space in them anymore. A star about one and a half to three times the size of our sun gets shrunk down to only about 20 kilometers across. But it still weighs the same as it did before. A neutron star is born. The neutron star starts spinning, creating an incredible gravitational field in a strong magnetic field. The strong magnetic fields spinning like that create high energy particles that produce radiation that is shot out into space in beams. Because the star is spinning, these beams are seen as if they are pulsing. We call it a pulsar. You can easily think of this as a lighthouse. A lighthouse is a light that is spinning. From above, you can see the beam of light going around and around. But out at sea, it looks like a pulsing beacon. Neutron stars shoot off energy in all different wavelengths, including radio, X-ray, and gamma ray. The Crab Nebula is very young, only about 7,500 years old. So it is very energetic and active, making it a great place to study pulsars. There are two types of pulsars, rotation-powered and accretion-powered. We just looked at a rotation-powered pulsar. The pulsar is produced by the neutron star spinning very fast and making strong magnetic fields producing the energy. As you know, there are also star systems where there are at least two stars together. A binary star system, for example, is two stars. Imagine looking up into the sky and seeing two suns. But that would be bright. When one of the two stars goes supernova, if it is big enough, it turns into a neutron star. A neutron star has a huge gravitational field and will begin to suck matter away from the other star. This matter will form a disk around the neutron star that we call an accretion disk. The matter flows down onto the neutron star and some of it is radiated out into space in the form of x-rays. Again, the star is spinning, so the beams of x-rays appear to pulse. If a star is less than one and a half times the size of our sun, it will not supernova and form a neutron star. It will become a white dwarf. If the star is between one and a half and three times the size of our star, it will become a neutron star. If the star is bigger than three times the size of our sun, it will become a black hole. A black hole has such a huge gravitational field that it warps space. It sucks everything into it and nothing can escape. Not light, not any other wavelength of radiation, not particles, nothing. The only way to see a black hole is actually see the stuff being sucked into it. The black hole sucks material toward it much like a neutron star does in the binary star system. An accretion disk forms around the black hole. 
The point at which the matter disappears into the black hole itself is called the event horizon. Particles are flattened in the intense gravity and give off x-rays. A second later, they are gone, eaten by the black hole. Here is a photo taken by the Chandra X-ray Space Observatory of a possible black hole. You can see the x-rays being shot out just as something is being sucked in. There are three types of black holes. Stellar black holes are about 5 to 100 times the size of our sun. Supermassive black holes are over a million times the size of our sun. And mid-mass black holes are the sizes in between. Scientists have recently discovered the middle-sized black hole. Supermassive black holes are usually found at the center of galaxies. Our own Milky Way galaxy has a supermassive black hole at its center. When it was discovered that radio waves were coming from space, astronomers began the field of radio astronomy and found that various objects produced radio waves. To their surprise, they found radio waves coming from nothing. They call these things quasi-stellar radio sources, or quasars for short. Quasars are X-rays, radio waves, and light waves given off by objects as they enter a supermassive black hole. That is why radio waves seem to be coming from nothing. They are really coming from a black hole, but you cannot see the black hole. The closest quasars are billions of light years away. So by studying them, we are studying the universe as it was billions of years ago. The supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way does not produce quasars. It seems that quasars are produced only when a galaxy is young. When a galaxy forms, it appears that a supermassive black hole forms at its center. There is a lot of dust and gas around for the black hole to feed on, and this produces the massive amount of energy needed to form a quasar. Over time, the dust and gas around the black hole is used up, and the black hole no longer is pulling in tons of matter. The quasar stops, because it is formed from pulled in matter. That is why there is no quasar at the center of the Milky Way, but at one time, billions of years ago, there might have been. When we see quasars, they are coming from galaxies billions of light years away. Thus, we are seeing them as they were billions of years ago. We can actually study the distant past, and beginnings of the universe, because we can actually see it as it was. <laughs> Don't worry, Leica. We're not going to get sucked into a black hole. They're too far away to harm us, except for the black hole in Herc's stomach. Have you ever seen him eat? Just like a black hole, he devours everything in sight. So I would keep your dog bowl away from him, Leica. <laughs> What are you guys up to? Oh, nothing. Just hanging. I'm getting a bit hungry. I think I will fire up the barbecue. What's wrong with Laika? <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. She's been acting like that weird all day. Check out our other episodes in the Let's Explore Astronomy series at www.tedcookproductions.com slash LEA. You will find all kinds of cool astronomy topics there. Hey, give a shout out to our sponsors, without whom we would not be here. Visit their websites and partake of their services and products. A big thank you to the Yukon Department of Tourism and Culture and Westmark Hotels, Westmark Whitehorse.